Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining today's webinar. My name is Natasha Vevichanian. I'm the National Account Executive at Viscosity and I'll be your host today. Neaton Van Gerlicher, Chief Technology Officer of Viscosity, will be covering Oracle ADW, also known as Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse. At the conclusion of Neaton's presentation, I'll be providing some information on how you and your company can get a complimentary $500 credit that you'll be able to use towards an Oracle ADW trial. And in the upcoming weeks, our team at Viscosity will be hosting additional workshops to walk you through provisioning your ADW environment, then help you load your data and start pulling analytics. Without further ado, I'd like to turn over to Neaton. Well, thanks, Tasha, for that great intro and some of that background information on the trial for ADW. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Neaton Van Gerlicher. I am the Chief Architect CTO at Viscosity, and this session is going to be this webinar session is going to be on Autonomous Data Warehouse: The Essentials. Thanks for joining me on this session. A uh, little background. Uh, my name, like I said, is Neaton Van Gerlicher. I am an Oracle ACE Director, a VMware Expert, uh, Chief Architect, and CTO at Viscosity. Uh, my primary responsibilities are service delivery for core technologies. And my focus has really been around uh, virtualization, engineering systems, converged systems, anything that surrounds and kind of revolves around the Oracle database and core technologies that, uh, that surround that. And I've developed quite a few white papers over the years, a lot of them uh, around the areas of best practice for application, database, high availability, consolidation. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a paper, white paper we just presented just recently uh, on Autonomous Data Warehouse, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the upcoming slides. And just prior to me joining at Viscosity, I worked for a small database company. And here's some of the books that I've written I had a hand in, at least, I should say at least, uh, the Data Guard Handbook, ASM Book, Exadata Book. Um, so all good stuff. And I got to give uh, street cred and, and kudos to my uh, other Viscasi boys. And uh, we've written quite a few books across the board on various topics. I think it's 14 um, books in, uh, in all across, across the folks of Viscosity. So let's jump on and talk about the agenda for today. Uh, this uh, session is primarily around Autonomous Data Warehouse, ADW, as we call it. Uh, so it's going to be an overview of ADW, some of the provisioning process flow, uh, data loading, monitoring, machine learning. And I'll, I know it's not listed here, but I'll touch on the benchmarks that we did uh, that helped out one of our customers. So the key features we're really going to touch on is the self-driving aspect of ADW. Uh, the high elastic, elasticity aspect and attributes of ADW, as well as the enterprise grade security. Right? So as you guys have probably uh, seen and heard a lot of the buzz around the autonomous uh, framework and autonomous stories at Oracle. So here's the, um, the autonomous portfolio as I see it. Uh, there's a list of five or six here of the um, autonomous platforms that are gonna be rolled out. The first and foremost is Autonomous Data Warehouse, which was uh, announced and released uh, at Open World last year. And then we have the OLTP, the Express Data uh, Database Cloud, NoSQL Cloud, uh, Big Data Cloud, and Analytics Cloud. All these are, are part of the autonomous uh, portfolio. And we've been, actually, we at Viscosity have been really fortunate. We had the great opportunity to test and get acquainted with AEW since January. Uh, and that's really kind of sparked a lot of our attention in working with uh, with our customers and uh, getting some exposure to autonomous data warehouse and that kind of leads into uh, some of the work that we did just recently uh, we were working quite hard on on this benchmark paper and the way this paper came about was uh, our customers who are uh, very heavy into data warehouse big data analytics they came to us uh, early on in the year as we're their trusted advisors and they asked us what is what does the next generation of data warehouse look like and how does that fit into our cloud story, right? So once we started having those discussions with our customers, you know, we, we embarked on this effort to figure out what's out there. You know, we, we knew uh, Redshift was there. We knew uh, a Snowflake was out there, a BigQuery, and also AEW was just recently announced. So we kind of uh, embarked on this effort to kind of evaluate these different products. So we really picked on uh, Redshift and, and ADW. Uh, as we were start, we are, as we are already familiar with Redshift and ADW was, was something we just got introduced to in January, 
So we embarked on this journey and effort to do a couple things. Uh, evaluate the ease of use, the manageability, the supportability, the monitoring aspect of it, and also the most importantly, uh, loading data in, uh, getting data out, so performance query, as well as the, uh, as the price, price performance. So all those are included in this white paper, and I highly encourage you folks, uh, if you get a chance to go to tips.viscosityna.com and, and look up this paper, we put a lot of effort into it, and you know, hopefully you get some, get some value out of it. The purpose of the benchmarks are really to provide a crucial information to which to really measure important factors such as uh, performance and cost per performance. So onwards to uh, the task at hand, the session. So we're gonna be going over through the overview of autonomous data warehouse. Uh, first and foremost, as you can see from this uh, picture, this is the architecture. And in the center here, we have the service management console and we have the built-in tools such as uh, SQL worksheet and machine learning. And the things around uh, the box, where I call the tentacle boxes, are some of the supportability tools that integrate and tie into Autonomous Data Warehouse. And we'll talk about that in the next couple of slides. But the key features here we're trying to illustrate is this uh, Oracle simplicity to end-to-end -end management of data warehouse, including provisioning of the databases, the fully elastic scalability, uh, scale of compute and storage independently. Uh, backup and recovery is all automated, and it's fully tuned, the load and go. You'll hear me use the term load and go throughout the session. We'll talk more about what that means. And then uh, the built-in worksheet and analytics um, aspect of this. So the autonomous data warehouse overview. So well, the platform is really built on the latest Exadata technology. And that includes Oracle 12.2 plus plus. I'll explain what that means in a minute. And the key components are PDB, Database Resource Manager, IO Resource Manager, and obviously the Optimizer. So th simply, we just specify the number of OCPUs and storage capacity when we provision uh, this um, ADW Cloud service. <coughs> and this provides us all the performance of Oracle Database in an environment that's really tuned and optimized for workloads such as Data Warehouse, and delivers a scalable and analytical uh, query performance. And again, it's designed to support all the standard SQL and BI tools that you're currently using, either on-premise or tools that you've already ported to the cloud. So you can, you can get uh, BI in the cloud or you can use OBIE that you're already using on-premise. Again, as I mentioned before about the load and go service. So what we mean by that is, and this is the things that we tested in our, as part of our benchmark too, the user, user interface with load and go. And what that means is uh, <clears throat> enabling the service creating tables, loading data, and running queries. As simple as that, These, uh, this is the core uh, competency of Autonomous Data Warehouse, is the fact that you can create these things, create the servers very easily, uh, create the tables easily like they normally would do, load the data, and run queries very quickly, all in the span of, of an hour or two. So no tuning is, is necessary. You don't need to consider details like parallelism, partitioning, indexing, or compression, or all the other feature functionality that usually goes into or the thought process that goes into deploying a system uh, like a data warehouse. Uh, and obviously no need to configure or manage any hardware because it's all in the cloud, right? And again, the tools and applications that connect to AWS use standard SQL net connections, either from on-premise or Oracle Cloud. So after you've created your ADW instance, well, what do you get? Well, you get a 12.2 uh, release database. And this is not your standard off-the-shelf kernel, uh, stock kernel uh, 12.2 instance. This 12.2 instance has additional features and functionality and patches that are part of 18C that were backported to 12.2. And that's why I call it 12.2 plus plus, because things such as the key optimizer and resource management features uh, were all backported. Uh, so it's not your standard 12.2 instance. This is 12.2 plus plus. Uh, the other key attribute is elastic service. Uh, execute resource changes, grow and shrink um, either your compute or your uh, storage without requiring any downtime. And we found this to be a bit of a uh, differentiator than the other uh, platforms we looked at. And other platforms, you, if you wanted to grow or shrink your cluster, uh, you would have to back up your, uh, your contents, your data warehouse, whatever it is, uh, grow your, you know, reprovision a new cluster and then restore your data. So that's fairly disruptive. What uh, ADW, we didn't have any of those uh, issues. We just were able to grow and shrink as needed. And I'll illustrate that in, in the upcoming slide. And it's highly secure. Uh, obviously, anything in the cloud has to be secure. 
and it's managed that way. Uh, but all the data is stored is encrypted by default in the Oracle database, and auth only authenticated users and applications can access the data as they connect into the database. So let's kind of uh, jump in to talk about how uh, the cloud AW cloud instance setup and enablement is done, right? So AW includes a cloud-based service console. As you can see in this pictorial here, in the center box, we have the service management uh, console. We have built-in access tools. We have the machine learning thing. So what can we do with the service console? Well, essentially, we, we, we can create the service. We can scale the service and do all the monitoring in, this, uh, in the service as well. Now, again, the monitoring piece you can do through a SQL developer or whatever your tools you have in-house. But if you wanted to use the user interface for some of the basic monitoring, that is there. Uh, and it also includes uh, tools such as a cloud-based notebook application, which kind of gives you some very simple uh, querying and data visual and uh, collaboration uh, capabilities, although you, you can use things like uh, DI platform. So there's different ways you can do analytics here. You can use uh, the um, Oracle DI platform cloud. You can use BI, Bix in the cloud, or Oracle Business Analytics cloud. Any one of those tools can tie into, into ADW. So from a provisioning standpoint, it's very simple. You go to the provisioning, uh, uh, you go to the service console on the main screen, you fix uh, create service, and you're basically put into this uh, screen where it provides you a list of things to put in. And it essentially, you only need to specify five parameters, your database name, your data center, Ashburner Phoenix, uh, number of CPUs, the storage capacity and admin password. Those are only the essential things that you need to set up, you need to input. And once that's done, you have a fully baked uh, and configured autonomous data warehouse system. And we found it to be, you know, you get that relatively quick within 30 seconds or so, you know, up to, up to, to a minute and you're ready to connect. And you can see from this example that we provisioned a two CPU count, one, uh, one terabyte storage capacity, um, uh, instance and the, the reason why I kind of go through is provisioning screens here is because if you if you're signing on with that $500 credit that Tasha mentioned earlier you'll see the exact same screens you probably input the same exact parameters and you'll get a uh, you'll get an instance that's going to be either one or two CPU count system so you're going to see the exact same screens when you do your trial um, as Tasha mentioned so once that's done once you've created your instance download the credential zip file Again, we talked about the, the tight security around uh, things in the cloud, and this is no ADW is no different. So, in order to get any kind of connectivity or access to ADW, you have to go through this process of getting your credentials file. So, the credentials file is used for client access to the instance. And ADW, the menu across the top of the screen, if you go to Service Console, you specify you download client credentials, and you'll be prompted to enter a credentials um, key store password. And that's going to be essential because you'll need that when you're uh, when you get to connectivity. So the certificate-based authentication uses an encrypted key stored in a wallet, both on the client side where the application is running and the server side where the database service is running, ADW is running. Uh, the key on the client must match the key on the server. So for those of you guys who are familiar with a wallet, this is no different. For those of you guys who are unfamiliar with wallet, uh, you'll have to do some of the steps I'll illustrate in the next couple of slides. But essentially, a wallet is a collection of files, including the key and other information needed to connect to your ADW uh, instance. So here's kind of a step-by-step -step guide to credentials and security, uh, as you'll need to do this before you do any kind of connectivity. First and foremost, the, um, you'll need to install Oracle uh, client software, which is, needs to be at least 12.201. Uh, and so from there, we already talked about downloading the client credentials uh, from the user interface and store that file in a secure folder on your computer. So the next thing you do is you unzip and uncompress the credentials file into a secure folder, edit the sqlnet.org file, replacing the path for your network admin, uh, and then update it accordingly. Right. And uh, the, this little thing at the bottom here, this is the example that we actually used uh, for our TNS names to connect into ADW. And as you'll see, the port number and the host names as well. So a couple of things to keep in mind. ADW is pre-configured to support Oracle Net Services and use secure, uh, secure TCP. 
as well as the credentials file we talked about. So you'll need to update your SQL net to Aura file by adding the following line. You need to update your uh, wallet location of where it is and then your credentials. And keep in mind, uh, it is most likely you guys are going to be accessing ADW from behind a corporate firewall. So the firewall must permit the use of the port that we talked about. The port is 1522 by default. So if that's not what you specified, you'll need to make sure that uh, that port is defined. Uh, that, including that, uh, the firewall must also allow access to servers within the oraclecloud.com domain uh, in order for you to have uh, uh, appropriate connectivity. So just keep in mind those two things because we got, uh, we ran into those issues uh, when we were doing our configuration. So now that we've got our credentials files, we've got everything set up, we've got our instance running, now uh, let's talk about connectivity. So there's so many different ways you can connect. You can use Oracle Net Services with various connection types, such as Oracle you know, OCI, ODBC, you know, JDBC OCI, and JDBC ThinDriver, right? So many different ways to get to this. Uh, in our benchmark and all the testing we did, well, we ended up using SQL Developer because it was very easy. We were already using it for other applications. I'm not a huge fan of SQL Developer, but it works well for what we were trying to do. So what does SQL Developer allow you to do with ADW? You can connect it, you can connect to the instance. You can create tables, you can load tables, you can copy tables, and you can even transfer a schema from on-premise to ADW. And so we did, as we started going through our benchmark, we did have other options. We did uh, kick the tires and start playing around with SQL CL. Um, so if you're going to do it, go with SQL CL, you want to use at least version 2.4.2 because it's specifically designed and uh, updated for um, autonomous data warehouse cloud. Uh, as well as the other option we're still kicking the tires around and playing with is implementing Node.js with Oracle Instant Client to connect to our ADW instance. So, so many different ways to get to get to this instance. So again, like I said, through our benchmark testing, we did use um, SQL Developer. Uh, so if you're gonna use SQL Developer, you have to get 17.4.1 at minimum because that, that version is specifically uh, designed to support ADW. And I'll kind of walk you through the, some of the key things to input. Uh, for a SQL developer. So obviously the connection names, you guys are, if you're familiar with SQL developer, this is pretty standard stuff. What's different here is the connection type, uh, you need to select Cloud PDB. Once you've selected that, the configuration file, click browse and select your location of your wallet that you downloaded in the previous, uh, previous slide. And then also uh, enter your wallet password. This is your key store password that you entered from the user interface. And then finally, your service. And this is your TNS names entry that you, uh, that you get. And so those three or four uh, things are slightly different than the uh, standard SQL developer input. But once you've got that, you can probably easily connect to the instance. And I should probably mention that once you've connected, uh, most likely you're probably gonna use a new role. as a new role for ADW called DW role. And the, this role provides common privileges for data warehouse developers, such as creating a hierarchy, creating jobs, creating mining model, uh, creating procedures create attribute dimensions. So these are all the key, um, uh, key roles and key capabilities of that DW role. So here's a very interesting concept we came across and learned as we were just kicking the tires of ADW. So the TNS names, uh, there's a predefined set of database services uh, and that's associated with your TNS names that I sh showed in our previous slide. And there's three database service names here. And these things really balance between, or trade off between performance and concurrency. At the topmost is the high service. And what high service does is high da uh, database service provides the highest level of resources to a connection. So it's really meant for high throughput, right? But it supports the fewest concurrent sessions. So it's not meant for highly concurrent uh, sessions, but it's really meant for high throughput. It's meant for speed. And PQ parallel query is supported with this uh, with this service. The next one down is medium. The medium da database service provides uh, it's just a step down from high in that it gives you pretty high throughput for your uh, sessions, uh, but it also trades that off. Uh, for a little bit more concurrency, so you can run multiple concurrent sessions at the same time. Again, PQ is also supported. At the bottom of the uh, this, uh, uh, poll is, is the low database service. And with the low database service, you're not gonna get that really high throughput, but you're gonna be able to run multiple reports, multiple sessions at the same time. And most of your queries are probably gonna run serially. So again, when we were thinking through this thing, well, 
try, we were, had a hard time grasping what high, medium, low really meant. We were thinking it had to do with concurrency, but really think of high, medium, and low as the, the services in terms of throughput. So the following table shows uh, some sample values that we use. And this is exactly the values that we had specified and went through uh, because we used, in our benchmark testing, we had 16 OCPUs. Uh, and we primarily used high for our, uh, for our benchmark test and even used high for uh, some, of the, uh, so some of the imports that we ran import data. So with high, you get three uh, concurrent uh, queries at one time. Uh, and the max idle, what that really means is that if you have a session or a connection that's been idle for five minutes and the session gets disconnected so that resources can be used by other sessions, other users, right? That's all that means. So with medium, you get 20 concurrent sessions. With low, you get uh, 32 uh, concurrent queries. So just keep in mind that what high, medium, low, what these service names really mean uh, is, is the performance versus concurrency. So I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about a very important and key attribute and differentiator uh, in AW, which is the scaling. And when we talk about scaling, we're talking about uh, a growing or shrinking uh, CPU and uh, storage uh, footprint. So in this case example, hopefully you guys can see this, this screen comes out okay on this. As you remember from the previous provisioning slide, we provisioned two OCPUs and a terabyte of storage. So what we're gonna do here is we'll do the same thing, but we're gonna change the core count from two to four and keep a one terabyte of storage. And again, keep in mind that this database is up and running throughout this whole process. There's no downtime, there's no, um, there's no impact to the application. So by, once we do that, we immediately refresh the page and there you go, we bumped it from two to four and we now have four OCPUs in our, in our environment with no downtime at all. Now that we've uh, talked about the provisioning aspects and the attributes of ADW from an infrastructure perspective, Let's delve into uh, the database aspect of autonomous data warehouse. So we start by talking about the things that, as far as DBAs are concerned, some of the things that are near and dear to them, uh, space management, uh, and there are parameters, some of the compression features and all the things that go with the database. So for ADW, it's slightly different. The parameters are optimized for data work, warehouse workloads. Things like memory, parallelism, sessions are based, all these things are configured based on the number of CPUs that you had provisioned in the create service uh, screens. So there's not a lot of things you can tweak here. Uh, so some of the key parameters you can probably change are, or should change or can change are the NLS settings, uh, approx approximation for aggregation, approximation for count distinct, and approximation for percentile. It's just a small number of, a handful of uh, parameters that I just mentioned here. But if you will want to look at the doc set, it's kind of a much more wider range of, of uh, parameters that you can and cannot uh, change and modify it. As the same thing goes for table space management. Uh, there's a predefined data in tab temporary table spaces. You just can't modify or create these table, uh, modify these table spaces. So again, the key aspect of autonomous data warehouse is the autonomous piece. If there was capability of manipulating and changing uh, parameters and changing table spaces, it takes the autonomous nature out of the autonomous data warehouse. And that's part of, partly the reason why there's limited functionality you can do from a user's perspective to manipulate uh, and change the database. Same thing goes for compression. Uh, all tables are compressed using hybrid column compression, HCC. Uh, so what happens is that when you load data or ingest data from from object store into ADW, that compression technique is applied in band. So there's nothing you can do to manipulate there or change that. It's just an added feature. Uh, so those are things that just come as part of the autonomous data warehouse service. And so things like uh, compression and statistics gathering are part of that process. And like I said, optimizer stats gathering, when you do uh, ingestion from object store into data warehouse, uh, stats are gathered as part of that process. The analyze process is done uh, during any direct path load operations. Now, obviously, as you, uh, you have, if you have longer you have your data warehouse into ADW, you're going to be manipulating data. You're going to be refreshing data. So thus, you're going to have the capability of gathering additional and incremental stats as needed. So there's no restrictions on that. Now, keep in mind, 
optimizer hints are ignored by default. So users can enable hints explicitly if needed. So I'm sure there's going to be applications of third-party apps that are typically have hints decorated or parallel hints uh, uh, decorated into the SQL. So in cases like that, if your application relies on these hints and a parallel parallelization hints, you can change the behavior of the optimizer. There's a parameter called optimizer underscore ignore underscore hints. You can set that to false either at the session or system level. And what that essentially does, it ignores, uh, allows uh, users to explicitly specify hints as opposed to the optimizer uh, uh, ignoring them by default. So again, you, you want to use that carefully because the whole idea is letting the optimizer make the right choices. And that's the uh, autonomous aspect of the autonomous data warehouse. And then finally, the result cache configuration is on by default on all queries. Uh, some of the restrictions on SQL, there's many DDL commands that cannot be executed in ADW. Uh, things like create index, drop index, uh, alter uh, parameters. So all those just you can't do. If you try to execute them, uh, you're gonna get a, uh, an error message, the error thrown at you, call or 1031 insufficient privileges. Uh, again, because of this is uh, the workload characteristic that is, is data warehouse, there's a lot of bloat that we typically would just see in a data database, a standard entered edition, enterprise edition on premise. Uh, so feature functionality that are removed for data warehouse include Java in the database, Oracle Multimedia, Oracle Apex. These are things that probably are not needed in a data warehouse platform, and thus they've been removed and restricted usage uh, in autonomous data warehouse. And finally, uh, there's restrictions data types, things like long, long raw, long raw, uh, nested tables, media types, and spatial types. These are uh, data types that are not currently supported in autonomous data warehouse. So now that we talked about some of the, uh, the caring feeding, if you will, uh, the data type re uh, restrictions, let's get into some of the data loading aspects because the key part of this, uh, key part of the load and go aspect of autonomous data warehouse is uh, loading the data and then going, if you will, right? So let's talk about uh, the loading capabilities and characteristics. Uh, there's several different ways to approach the problem. You, you can load data through SQLnet using either SQL loader, your ETL scripts, uh, CTAS, or whatever means that you have to load data. And this is okay over SQLnet uh, for small amount of data because you can be network bandwidth driven, right? So for those things, uh, for small amount of data, incremental data sets, refreshes uh, are okay using SQLnet and using SQL order or ETL. And if you are going to use SQL order, recommend uh, setting the read size and bind size to 100 meg and direct equals n, and that'll give you a little bit better performance. But for loading large amount of data, especially the initial ingestion of data uh, into AW, oh, it's definitely preferred to use object store ingestion. And we'll talk about some of the uh, utilities that are new in, in um, AW to support that. So the source data can come from Oracle Object Store, Object, Oracle Object Store Classic, AWS S3, or in even Azure Blob Storage. So these are all uh, standard, typical uh, formats that you can draw from and ingest from. So let's talk about this new API called DBMS Cloud. This new P uh, PLSQL package is used for specifically accessing files in Object Store and loading data into your tables. So no, no need to manually define external tables like we normally would do for loading files. And this makes it really, really easy to format and source the data into, uh, you know, into the data warehouse. So the four, two key aspects of this thing, you store your Object Store credentials using procedure dbms underscore cloud dot create credential and this credential file is the same one we mentioned and talked about during your create service um, of, of the ADW. So this operation, once you do create credential, this operation stores the credentials in the database in an encrypted format. And keep in mind, this is only done once. Once that credential file is stored, you don't need, ever need to go back and, and manipulate that. The only time you will have to change it or reload is if your credentials file changes, it gets uh, manipulated or you have to create a new one for whatever reason. But other than that, that's an outlier. But um, once you stored it, you're ready to go. So here's an example of a DBMS cloud. Uh, this is exactly what we ran uh, for our benchmark. So we basically, the, there's two different package routines here. 
executions. One is the create credentials. As you'll notice, we've got a, give it a credential name. We assign it, a, uh, define it with the user ID and the key store password. Once that's done, once you store it into the database, we're good to go. And the next thing we do is we, we're off on loading data from object store into ADW. And that's where that copy underscore data function comes from. So we specify the table name, which is channels in this case, and we back reference the credential name, which is the object store cred. And then we have a file URI list, which points to the data file stored in object store. And again, the format is a JSON object. So this is simply what you all you need to do, load data into uh, ADW. And if you guys visit our website at viscosityna.com, you'll find um, some of the scripts that we've done using DBMS Cloud um, to load data into ADW. I'll give you some sample ideas. And uh, also, you can do this with external table. If you want to query data files in the cloud, uh, you need to first create the object store credentials like you did before. Uh, and then you reference the uh, external table just like it would be a data file. Right. Uh, one of the things we do recommend though, if you're going to use external tables that you use DBMS Cloud Validate. I don't show it here on the screen, but there's a validate external table function. And what this procedure does is scans your score, source files, validates them, and using the format options specified, you create that you created an external table. So basically, it's a validation and cleansing and validation aspect of your external table. So uh, a data pump is plays a, a huge part into loading data as it does on premise into ADW. Data pump import and export are key aspects of this thing. Now I would mention that the data pump import and export versions. Uh, are very specific, you wanna get the 12.2. And in fact, if you go to the service console where we first did the provisioning, there is a, an entry there that allows you to download the most current version of data pump uh, to su that supports ADW. Specifically, the, uh, it's the credentials file that are valid, uh, that are specific to ADW. So uh, we used Oracle data, data pump export to export existing on-premise schemas and migrate them into uh, Oracle uh, ADW using import. So the recommendation is uh, there's so many different ways to uh, load data into ADW using uh, data pump. Well, we recommend using the schema mode. Um, basically, what you do, you do is, is list schemas that you want to export. And for faster migration, export schemas into multiple data pump files with parallelism. And you'll have to use the exclude and, and data options parameter. And what this is used for is to ensure that the object types which are not supported in the ADW, as I mentioned, long, long raw, uh, are not exported. And then finally, table partitions are grouped together so they can be imported faster during the uh, part of the import process. And this final bullet here gives you a kind of a sample example of how we uh, do the export. We do an ex exclude on index cluster, index type, materialized views, and uh, we specify a data link, uh, a DB link and data options as well. And we specify the parallelism and name of the dump file as well as the schemas that we're going to export. Once that's done, it produces the dump file. We take that dump file, load it into object store, uh, and the next thing we do, the next uh, step in that process is to import that data. So you run uh, data pump import into a dump file parameter, uh, which specifies a list of URLs uh, on object store, along with the credentials file. And so for best performance, what we did in our testing is we specified the high database service, which we talked about in the, in the earlier provisioning section. So in this example here, you can see uh, we're doing IMPDP, we specify the password, specify the directory for data pump directory, the credentials file, and a pointer to the object store with the parallelism of 16. Um, so the partition uh, options is merge. Uh, we see a transformation of segment attributes, and we also list exclusion of the data types that are not supported. So some of the key important uh, import considerations. Partition tables are converted into uh, non-partition tables. Uh, storage attributes are ignored for the tables are ignored. Uh, you'll see that index uh, IOTs, index organized tables are converted into heap regular tables. 
Uh, and there's a, the constraints are converted into relied, disabled, non-validate constraints. And that's really important. It's very practical, especially when you're loading master detail type ta uh, information, master detail type tables uh, independently. And what this does is avoids additional checks during ETL uh, loads. So those things are a con an important considerations, as well as the things I mentioned before about uh, indexes, clusters, and index types, and data types that are not currently supported in ADW. Now that we've loaded, loaded the data into ADW, I'm sure the, the big excitement is gonna be pulling data out, running your queries, using your BI tools, your analytic tools to run and extract data. Uh, as a side process of this is really monitoring how well your query performance is, how well your CPU is, how, how is your storage doing. So that's where the monitoring aspect of ADW comes in play. And then we'll focus on a couple of slides here and show you some screenshots I've taken of, of the, the dashboard. So this overview and activity tab shows real time and historical information about the utilization of the service. So what we do is we sign into our uh, My Services dashboard and for the service that you want to do, you monitor, click to manage, and get to the service console to start monitoring. Uh, so, so effectively what this is doing is giving you a simplified monitoring using a web-based service console and it, it's essential uh, historical and real-time performance charts a couple with real-time SQL monitoring to monitor running and past SQL statements as well. Uh, and then you get historical data loading monitoring as well. So here are some screenshots. Uh, and on this screen here, we're showing database activity. And this chart shows the average number of sessions in a database using CPU or waiting on a CPU event. Uh, the CPU utilization, this chart shows CPU utilization of each consumer group, a uh, high, medium, lower, and other groups. And then uh, the queued, uh, then next we show running statements as well as queued statements. So we want to keep an eye on the queued statements if they get too far back. And in this screenshot, we I don't know how this is going to look on your screen there, but this uh, this shot, screenshot basically shows a couple of different things: a storage, CPU utilization, and running statements. The, so storage really shows the total and used storage capacity that you have provisioned. Uh, it indicates what percentage of the space is currently in use. And for the CPU utilization, this chart shows the historical CPU utilization of the service. And running shows the historical uh, uh, array of service utilization uh, coupled with the average uh, historical response time. And you can actually drill down into these things too. Again, this is not the, uh, this is not my, this is a very simplistic way to get to your uh, monitoring. I'm sure you have your own uh, techniques, your own, uh, uh, third-party tools that you can use to get in and, and especially like SQL developers, great way to analyze the data sets. Uh, one thing I would mention now is the retention time should probably be changed. And so retention time, uh, DBMS workload repository, you can modify the snapshot settings and that is an allowable operation in ADW. So we typically had to change this thing to uh, for 30 days to capture the right amount of information for our benchmarks. And then, like I said, you can drill down this one specific SQL statement. Um, we can drill down and look at uh, weight statistics, uh, IO statistics, and it'll even give you a SQL monitor drill down. So basically we'll, from here, we drill down and it gives us a parallel server, DB time, activity time, IO quests. It gives you an entire SQL monitor output. So you do have some bit of, uh, of drill down capabilities in this. So let's change our, our, our gear a little bit and talk about uh, machine learning. Machine learning is a key aspect of, uh, of autonomous data warehouse and there's two aspects of machine learning. One is for for the end users, the business analytics, and then there's the machine learning that's uh, that's going to be coupled in into the database. So first and foremost, let's talk about the machine learning for uh, the collaborative interface for data scientists. So this machine learning is based on uh, Apache Zeppelin so the notebooks execute in Zeppelin servers and make secure TCP connections and use JDPC ADW connections. So what this uh, machine learning in notebooks does is it allows the creation of workspaces, projects, and notebooks, and provides us a browser-based interactive data analytics to really develop and document and share. So it's a really a collaboration tool. So key aspects of this is data ingestion, selection, data viewing, discovery, graphing, visualization, and deep data analysis. 
In order to start uh, get, get, get started with machine learning, you'll have to do two things. We'll have to go to the ML uh, screen, which is the service page, and we'll have to create two and establish two users. One is the uh, OML user management for AD uh, admin account, which gives you a create and modify uh, super privileges, if you will. And there's an OML application user. And this application user accesses the ML to create, view, and share notebooks and do the analytics. So you can access this, um, this screen from the ADW service console and administration tab and select and manage Oracle ML user screen to set up these accounts. And once you're done doing that, uh, you can start with the analytics and, uh, component of it. So speaking of analytics, there's uh, Oracle Analytics Cloud allows you, is a really good coupling with the notebooks and Zeppelin because it allows you to do uh, selective interactive visualization and automatically create advanced calculations. So things like classification, regression testing, anomaly detection, uh, disparity, uh, clustering, association, these are all things that you can do with the analytic cloud. And then couple that with data visualization. So you tie in anal anal analytics to visualization. You select the right elements that you want to choose, select the variety of visualization types and how you want to look at the data. So this is a really good way to start with machine learning for business analytics. Now, what about machine learning and ADW as far as the database, right? So a key part of machine learning AI in, uh, in ADW is the diagnostic engine that's powered by machine learning. And it's constantly monitoring the database for performance bottlenecks, capacity issues, uh, problem footprints, potential issues across different stack layers. So what the idea here is, uh, and this is basically a footprint for the things that are gonna come up uh, in roadmap, is that we'll expect to see AI and machine learning to start automatically detecting anomalous events, uh, problem footprints, and adjust the database parameter, adjust the, machine, uh, the database to prevent uh, resource exhaustion or impending doom, either for the application layer or the database layer. So this data is collected and submitted and is analyzed on a regular basis to determine the best course of action. So think of this as automating error handling within ADW itself. So operations will log data as information source and then use that to train uh, the machine learning aspect with the training model mod, uh, module. Uh, and, then, and then what's gonna happen eventually is you're gonna start seeing uh, this modeling uh, start growing and growing, have a, a larger footprint of known issues and cases, and from there do problem uh, corrective action and do root cause analysis. So now that we're done with this, let's talk a little bit about the benchmark that we did. And again, uh, I, I touched on this in the beginning, uh, beginning part of our session. We embarked on a journey to help some of our key customers who were looking to us as trusted advisors and helping them figure out what is the next generation data warehouse and where do they need to build this. So we started looking at different couple couple different platforms, specifically Redshift and Oracle. And we came across this star schema benchmark. It's been around for a long time. It's not really an Oracle benchmark as such. It's, just, it's a standard schema benchmark that involves line order, customer, supplier date, uh, and data warehouse date. And the sampled schema, it runs about a little over two terabytes, maybe a terabyte or so with compression. So what part did we play in this? We effectively did four, uh, four tests. One was loading data into object store. Uh, the second was loading data, what I call the ingestion into ADW. Uh, and then two performance queries. One was running a query with single sessions, Q1 to Q4. And I should take a step back. Uh, the benchmark study and the star schema benchmarks includes uh, a category of data sets ranging from and query sets that range from Q11 to Q43. It's about 13 uh, in total. So we ran this, the single user sessions of, uh, execution. We ran Q11 to Q43 serially. And we probably ran this about 20 times over a course of you know several weeks just to make sure that our numbers are correct. Uh, and then and look at that number uh, from a perform price performance as well as last time pers uh, perspective for uh, ADW versus Redshift. And again, we ran that same kind of execution uh, with uh, multi-threaded and parallel. So concurrency is what we tested here. So we ran two thread sessions. Uh, one thread session was tied to a very complex query set within that benchmark. And the other one was a very simplistic one. 
And when our the idea here was how much volume of data, how much volume of queries can we run in one hour period of time? We bought one hour worth of ADW and one hour worth of Redshift. How much throughput can we get? How many queries can we run? And that was the basis behind this. Uh, and again, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, we have our a benchmark load test um, that we have written a white paper on. We'd love for you guys to download it, review it, and give us some feedback. And hopefully it'll give you some insight in price performance as well as overall performance, raw performance between these two products. And when the idea wasn't really to, to pivot one versus the other, its idea was just kind of take two and see how they differ from a user experience perspective as well as uh, uh, speed, speeds and feeds kind of perspective. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up with it, the ADW summary. So ADW uh, supports all standard SQL and, and BI tools and delivers a scalable analytic query performance. And the performance is, is really based on the Oracle database, which has been around for a long time. The difference here is it's a well-tuned, optimized data work, warehouse workloads. And I the key aspect for us is that it scales without application interruption. So you're allowed, you have the capability of growing storage and growing compute without having to tear down your system, uh, unload your data, and reload the data. So it's, this is a very completely online with zero interruption. Um, as they say, it's, it's a, it's a no, database, no DBA required, but we, we found is that there is some DBA work required, and which is a good business, uh, which is good for you guys who are DBAs who still want to be involved. So things like uh, cleansing the data, uh, data integration, uh, data population, all those things are still requ still require DBA activity, uh, but there's not a lot of tuning. Uh, one of the key aspects of our benchmark was to run this workload without any tuning and use it as is out of the box. So it doesn't require a lot of tuning. So the self-driving, self-securing, self-repairing aspects and attributes of ADW, we would, were fully realized through our testing. So uh, other key aspects of ADW provides a data warehouse platform, as we talked about, uh, backing up the database, patching and upgrading are all part of an inherent benefit of the automation. And then finally, uh, it's a design as load and go. As I've mentioned several times, the key aspect is loading the data into the database. Uh, you create your service, you define your tables, load the data, and run your uh, queries using standard off-the-shelf tooling that you already have. So with that, well, thank you very much, and I appreciate your time, and I hope you guys get a chance to review our content and our, and our white paper. Look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Neaton, and thanks to all of you who have joined in on today's webinar. If you have any questions regarding anything we covered today, and more importantly, if you would like to get your free $500 credit to start testing Oracle ADW, please email us at hello at viscosityna.com and someone on our team will be sure to provide you easy to follow directives so that you can be on your way to start testing ADW. Again, we will be hosting online workshops available in July and August to guide you through the ADW provisioning process, uh, loading your data, and then the actual data querying process itself. So stay tuned for exact dates and times of our upcoming workshops, and thank you so much again, everyone, for your time, and we look forward to helping you with your complimentary ADW trial. Have a wonderful day.